so far. We're going to change gears now and go straight across to Anil Khanna, Managing Director at Blue Dart Express. It's most appropriate that we're touching base with him in what has been, uh, you know, a couple of days of uh, frenetic activity in the e-commerce space with uh, uh, Flipkart, Snapdeal, Amazon vying for customers with attractive discounts, hoping to really, uh, you know, create a surge in volumes in the festive season. Uh, as uh, a company that, uh, you know, plays a big role in the back end of e-commerce with logistics, uh, Anil Khanna is well placed uh, to talk about how this trend is likely to grow. Thanks very much for joining us on NDTV Profit. I'm going to ask you a very simple question first up. Uh, you know, if you take a look at the e-commerce uh, share of Blue Dart's revenues today versus three years ago, how does it stack up? So the e-commerce logistics has been growing very, very rapidly in India. Uh, all studies show that the CAGR growth over the last five years of e-tailing logistics has been 52%, uh, and it is growing much, much faster than the B2B uh, express logistics, and the share obviously has been going up. Just to give you an example that in 2010, for Blue Dart Express, the share of e-commerce logistics was about 1%, and currently is at 25%. So that should give you an idea as to how the share of e-commerce logistics has been growing uh, in the total uh, express logistics business. Okay, I'm just going to ask the same question another way. What is the type of growth rate that you're seeing in the e-commerce segment, sir? Yeah, so if you if you see the the share of e-tailing uh, uh, to total retail business in India is minuscule when you compare it to countries like U.S. or China or other developed countries, and all indicators show that this growth is sustainable. Okay, uh, so you know you're bullish about this segment going forward. Are you looking at uh, you know big investment, planning some uh, serious innovation, so that you can capture a bigger chunk of this high growth area? So we we have been investing a lot into infrastructure and improving our last mile delivery capability, uh, and we we are also looking at innovations like the one we launched today, something called a parcel locker, uh, which is very very prominent in Germany and and Europe and other Western countries, which is an alternate delivery method where. Having a uh, door delivery at your home, you have a preference uh, of you know choosing the delivery through the parcel locker, and uh, it's basically customer convenience, and also helps us improve our delivery strike rate. Okay, let's try and understand uh, exactly uh, how a parcel locker will work. Uh, you know, uh, you've got the experience of what happened after it was launched in developed markets. How do you see it playing out here? So currently, if let's say you were to order a shipment on, on a portal or, or a marketplace, uh, you have an option of asking for a home delivery. Uh, parcel locker is another option where if you don't want a home delivery, uh, you can ask for the delivery through a parcel locker. It is, in terms of looks, it is, it is like a, a, a bank locker, but it operates uh, in a very different method. So once you have ordered your shipment, uh, you, you get uh, an SMS saying that your shipment has been sent through Blue Dot Express, wide AOA bill number so and so, and you go to the parcel locker, you, you punch in your AOA bill, within seconds you get an OTP, you punch in the OTP and the parcel locker opens, you can collect your shipment and, and go. Are the margins in this uh, business better than normal? Uh, see, the e-commerce business is complicated. Uh, one, because you have to make uh, multiple delivery attempts, uh, being B2C. Secondly, 70% of the uh, e-commerce business currently in India is on cash and delivery. That further complicates and increases your cost. So yes, uh, whilst the margin may be slightly better than the normal B2B, but the costs are also substantially higher. Okay, let's talk about numbers. Noticing that Blue Dot Express, the revenue per kg has improved 8% YNY and EBITDA at 28% YNY. This despite fuel costs being a pass-through. So is this essentially because of e-commerce, sir? No, 
so when you look at the overall uh, EBITDA or EBIT, you know there are a number of factors that impact the EBIT. Uh, so it's not only the the gross margins that you come through various businesses. Uh, you may have some one-time you know impacts which may impact the EBITDA. So uh, and which we normally explain in our in, in our annual report that what are the one-time uh, you know uh, items which have impacted our our, our bottom line. So uh, looking at one particular quarter's EBIT would not give you the right picture. Okay, so I just wanted to get a sense from you on, you know, um, if you can just tell us, are there any large clients, say one or two large clients that you have tie-ups with that makes you secure and you don't have to go uh, trying to build multiple relationships? Uh, uh, what's the status there? No, no, no. We are absolutely neutral, and we are with all the all the players, uh, all the large players and and smaller players. So there are no exclusive tie-ups as far as Blue Dart is concerned. Okay, so you're absolutely neutral. Um, no, you know, sort of priority tie-ups in a sense. I wanted to ask you, you know, when you had this like a big billion sale uh, day, does it pose quite a severe challenge for um, you know delivery companies like yours because there's this sudden surge in demand? Yes, yeah, so I think it was last year was a good learning experience for for everyone, for the retailers, for the vendors, as well as the logistics players. And we've used the last time's learnings to be better prepared this year. So one thing that uh, Bruda did was uh, we we took the volume projections on an origin destination wise basis from all our large players, so that we could look at you know capacity build up. So kept building up capacities for pickups, building up capacities for line haul, building up capacities for deliveries. So I, I feel that the entire industry is uh, much better prepared this year versus last year. Good to know, of course, and inevitable in a sense that you'll be better prepared this year. Lots of learnings from last year. Uh, another question, and you know, uh, perhaps this is a slightly unfair one, but do you see now the potential for some takeovers by e-commerce players of logistics companies, particularly, you know, the smaller ones? Do you see that uh, uh, sort of as a trend that could play out? So if you'll, if you'll see that, you know, Flipkart, uh, you know, started doing their own deliveries about three, four years back uh, through their own company called eCart. Uh, so 85% of their volumes they were doing through eCart and the 15% was being distributed to various uh, express players. Whilst on the other hand, you have players like uh, Paytm and, and Snapdeal who, who didn't go that route and they were using purely the express players. You have Amazon on the other hand, which again has its own uh, logistics uh, wing, but also uses express players like Blue Dart and others. Uh, so it's it's a, it's a combination, uh, but our belief is that you know uh, the expertise of of uh, express uh, business lies with the express companies, and uh, every player would like to focus on their core business uh, and not not on on logistics, and therefore uh, we see more of uh, business coming to express companies. Fair enough, that's a valid point of view. You've started the e-fulfillment centers. How do you see that helping growth? So e-fulfillment center basically is, is, is a warehouse where, you know, the shipments come in from various, various vendors and you have to do a quality check and, and, uh, invert the shipment. And, uh, then as and when the order comes, you have to execute the order. You again have got to do a quality check and then, um, send it out for delivery. Uh, so it's basically, you know, uh, a B2C, uh, uh, a warehouse where you know it's complicated versus a B2B warehousing where the number of SQs are large, number of orders per day are very very large, the number of activities that you do are very very large. So it's much much more complicated and uh, it has to be fully IT integrated with the with the marketplace or the portal 
or the SMEs because they would like to have uh, a visibility not only to their order execution but also to their inventory levels. So we we have we have we have uh, uh, now put up uh, one in uh, in Gurgaon, and we're going to be putting up another one in Bangalore towards the end of this year, and then one in Mumbai, uh, you know, early next year. But we are purely driven by customer demand, and whatever we are hearing from our customers is that they are wanting us to put up fulfillment centers in other smaller places too, and faster. So. Whilst we may have drawn up our plans based on whatever feedback we had earlier got from customers, but this, this, like I said, that this industry is, you know, growing and developing so fast that the customer demands keep changing. So we'll be driven by customer demand. So if tomorrow a customer says no, we want it in Lucknow or we want it in Patna or we want it in Guwahati, uh, we would be willing to go and put it up uh, faster than what, uh, what we had planned. Finally, I wanted to ask you whether you have uh, plans for, um, you know, expansion in tier two, three, four towns uh, for value-added services. So we have been expanding our, uh, you know, reach into the smaller cities o over a period of time. Uh, for the last three, four years, very aggressively, we have increased our presence into tier two, tier three, and tier four cities, and that's an ongoing initiative. Uh, we keep taking feedback from our, our large customers, uh, keep taking volume projections, and based on that, we keep, uh, you know, drawing up our plans on expansion into the smaller cities. Anil Khanna, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you here on NDTV Profit. Look forward to seeing you more frequently on the channel. That was Anil Khanna, Managing Director, Blue Dart Express. We're going to take a break when we return here on the show. Our focus is back uh, to the stock markets and to earnings. Uh, that's after a quick break.